I'm Lee Vile. I'm a irrigated farmer on a property called Northdale, which is just west of Moolamine in southern New South Wales. We have 2,400 hectares here, which we've had in the family for the last 51 years. It's a mixed farming operation. At the centre of it, certainly historically and even now, is rice. We also have a, both a dry land and an irrigated winter cropping program and a self-replacing dual-purpose merino flock. I guess with respect to greenhouse gas emissions, this path for us started early in the 2000s, around about 2001, somewhere there. And even then we saw that a big element of it was methane, both from our rice system and our livestock system, but also depended on what the fate of soil carbon was. So with that sense, we commenced a process of altering our rice system, going from aerial seeding to direct drilling. We embarked on a program of revegetation in a range of different ways here on the property. And we've also converted all of our cropping program across to a no-till methodology to uh, at least preserve soil carbon. Methane being 21 times more potent than carbon dioxide, any emissions of carbon from the soil while it's underwater in a rice program come out as methane. So what we realised is that by altering the way we established our rice from what we call aerial seeding where germinated seed is dropped into water to a drill seeded program where we drill rice and it grows much like a wheat crop does for the first six weeks where it's irrigated and then immediately drained. The methane production from rice is reduced by approximately 60%. So we've made that change over the last 20 years so that now between 80 and 100% of our program is drill seeded. There are other advantages in weed control, improved water productivity, even avoiding the downsides of wildlife like ducks but the greenhouse consequence of what we've done there has been substantial. On-farm agricultural research is a very important part of rising to the greenhouse gas challenge. We've been performing on-farm research supported by GRDC on mid-row banding of nitrogen deep in the soil for better crop uptake, more efficient crop uptake, and reduced nitrous oxide emissions from the use of that fertiliser. And that's exactly what we found, that we get better crops, savings on crop inputs, and by inference, less nitrous oxide emissions and hence reduced greenhouse gas emissions in our irrigated cropping. There's two main areas I think research can deliver us to help us reduce our carbon footprint. The first is reducing the emissions from energy consumption. I think being here in an Australian landscape, the need to transport product from markets and to markets and needing to irrigate means we will be substantial energy consumers. If we can get away from fossil fuels as much as possible for that energy consumption, that will be very beneficial. Secondly, we do need a meaningful, accurate, user-friendly means to estimate our greenhouse gas emissions. The issue of greenhouse gas emissions, in an agricultural sense at least, is very important to me. It's, it's very clear to almost everybody that our greenhouse gas emissions globally are still following the wrong trajectory. Great change generally happens through collective small actions. Agriculture operates on the vast bulk of the Australian landscape. So improvements that are made within agriculture can have massive effects on Australia's and, and global greenhouse gas emissions. So actions of landholders to quantify and reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, to innovate, to utilise technology to do that, are a very important part of what this nation needs to achieve to reduce its greenhouse gas footprint. <laughs>